What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Rhea and Fran giving you that Friday energy on a Wednesday. We are back. It is Rhea and Fran. Fran hey. is back from her friend's bachelorette party, and we are ready to go. We're ready to get swinging today, okay? It's still beautiful outside. It's still sunny. Yep. It's glorious. I don't know if they've ever heard about giving a sunny day on a weekend. I guess not, because the weekend <laughs> looks like it's going to get shitty again, yep. but we are just going to hold on to this while we have it. Well, Welcome back. Thank you. I'm happy to be back. Um, and I am happy it is not like it being a nice day today is doing wonders for my mental health. Like I think if I came back from Cabo and it was like 50 degrees and raining, I would have really came in with a different energy today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is, it's it's lovely. This episode of Chicks in the Office is presented by Abercrombie. The Abercrombie Wedding Shop has collections for every part of the wedding experience, which is so smart, and it's all in one place, and it's all crazy cute. We got dresses from the wedding dress shop. I'm so excited to wear them to some weddings I have coming up this year. And you can also get ready because on the 25th, Abercrombie is dropping a whole new set of dresses for the wedding shop and you have got to see the new pieces because they are adorable and you want to make sure you are on top of them you're gonna them. love them we've seen all the pieces they are to die for and i'm in full abercrombie right now tank top jeans abercrombie you guys know how much we love abercrombie so this episode is presented by abercrombie yeah we're wearing the exact same jeans today. we are we both showed up in the same jeans so but, that's um, uh that's that's the coordination for us but that's no, gonna the, happen the, the one um especially the new stuff so good anybody that if you are a bride obviously they have amazing stuff but i feel like they're we're about to be wedding season like spring summer uh they have amazing amazing it's dresses. all so adorable yeah. so make sure you check out the wedding shop at abercrombie happy to be back looks like you guys Held down the fort. Of course. <laughs> of course. Me and Lil Bro crushed it. Everybody crushed it. Um, and uh, yeah, I know you're devastated that weekend. you didn't get to have a 20 minute conversation about the rat beef. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I'm glad we got to dive into that because. Yeah. No, as you, sh of course, that is so fun. I mean, honestly, like, I was. I, I saw the posts and the videos and every, and everything. It was like looking at the topics. I was like, oh, great episode. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You <laughs> you, know? you were missed. You were missed yeah. greatly. Um, and welcome back. Thank you. How was your trip? Oh, it was so fun. I bet. So fun. Yeah. Um, We had a great time. It was beautiful. Honestly, there were some people. It was funny because we were on like a JetBlue flight Friday and back Monday and it was mm -hmm. like those were quite literally the only flight options yeah. for like direct flights from New York, JFK. Um, so like everybody who was on the plane on Friday, a lot of them were on the plane on Monday. It's like almost like you traveled with them. I sat across from the same girl <laughs> uh, on on both flights and she must have thought I was really ill because I was just blowing my leg. Like, just like nonstop. It's just congested as always. But um, I heard some people who were like complaining about the weather and i was like oh my god complaining about the weather crazy. in mexico yeah they got back they were we were getting on the plane i heard a, a couple being like oh you know i wish because they saw they were like oh hey like they were seeing mm -hmm. other people from the plane they were all talking oh, yeah, how was your weekend catch up. oh my god what'd you do yeah and and they were like oh you know it was a it was a little chillier and we and I looked at my friends. We we're like chilly, chilly. It was like eighty degrees, and there there was That's a lovely. Wonderful. There was like a lovely breeze. That's nice. That's so what you it mean. wasn't. I'm like, what do you want it to be? Scorching hot. You're dying, sweating. Yeah, like, the, no, the, the breeze adds a nice little factor into a, a beautiful sunny trip because then you want yep. to stay in the sun all day long. If, yep. if it's sunny and there's no breeze, you're like, this is nice for an hour, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my god, it's too hot. Yep, but. Just a fantastic. I, I honestly texted you. I know, like we. I don't think you have fully made a decision on location yeah. for your bachelorette party. This should be high up in the running. It really should because it's it's just so fun. There's so many great places. Um, we had so many great meals. The re the resort we stayed at was so nice, and just gorgeous boat day. People took us out on the boat was amazing. Got to swim in the mm. in the ocean, in the deep blue sea. Madeline saw whales. Oh, we wow. didn't see, but this so it was really That's a just treat. Yeah, yeah. That sounds yeah. really nice. It was fantastic. I mean, yeah, Mexico is, is top of the list for for me. But there's so many different spots you can go to Mexico. Yeah. So it just depends. I mean, like 
if I don't want to go too far, like Cancun is closer. You know, yeah. that's only a four hour flight versus yeah, six yeah, hour yeah, flights. Yeah. Really, it really depends. But Cabo's up there. I will say, I guess I don't know what's going on with the uh, in the sky these the days. Air traffic, but every you're, everybody's flying faster. I don't know. You know what they're doing? I don't know they're what's lying. going on. <laughs> they're lying so that you you seem like you're er landing earlier. Yeah. I think that's what they do. They act like the flight is going to be longer. This is every single flight I mean, that the, I've been the, on. The pilot literally said he was like, we are, we're gonna, we're moving faster than usual. Yeah. So. Well, you know, we're going to make sure don't they don't know. lose a wing up there. But yeah. um, every single flight, you land like an hour earlier than what it says these days. So I think yeah. they're just doing it so that you're like, oh my God, that was so amazing it of just them. just made the airline feel better about it. Right, that they're they're just like, wow, yeah, what we, a great pilot. It was five, it was under five and a half on the way there. Not bad, not bad. was not that bad. And like f under five, it was like four hours 45 on the way back. Now I understand why everybody in California goes to Cabo. Like yes. like growing up, when I, when I hear yep. Cabo, I think the hills. Right, like we, the Laguna, Laguna Beach was referenced many times. Immediately, on, on this trip. <laughs> I'm thinking Laguna Beach or the hills yes. because they always went to Cabo. Yep. It was like a thing for somebody's birthday. They're going to Cabo. Imagine being so close yeah. to somewhere like Cabo. We went to the bar. That they, they, wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. See, that's a dream. And we were like, damn. When I hear Cabo, I immediately we're think like, of that. I think this is where Stephen called Kristen a slut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It brings it all back. Like, like high school, they're going to Cabo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There were some fun, like just funny crowds. When we went out uh, Saturday night, there were, you know, bachelorette trips, birthday trips, older crowd. Mm. And then there was like literal 12 year olds. Like we were like, they were, I was like, oh boy, these, they're, they're the young. They're like, the, they were, I'll give them a generous 15. Yeah. And like, they're not going to the kids club. They're going to the real club. No, no, no. I no. mean, of course, because yeah. when I was 15, I was go I was trying to go to the real club. So I'm not yep. going to the kids club where my, my parents would drop me off on vacation so they can go to the casino. Yep. No, I'm making my way to the other club. Exactly. Um, so that makes sense that there's a there's a, an array of age groups there, but also yeah. just looked so beautiful. You all looked amazing. Yes. All the outfits, everybody looked incredible. Just with jealous of drinking in the sun and soaking in the yeah. beach and the pool. Just looked like an absolute blast. I had some, I had some margaritas that just were so good. It really tickled and Madeline, you. Madeline, whose you know trip it was, looked fucking amazing. Yeah, like, she did. We could not. I honestly, I, I thought we could not uh, really talk about it enough. She just mm -hmm. crushed Glowing. it, and the, like the co-ed thing was so fun. Mm -hmm. Like we had, we had our separate houses, but like going out, we all got to go out together and like dinner and everything, which was fun because it was just like you know. Built-in friends. Yeah, come, uh, combined groups. Exactly. Um, it looked like exactly. a blast and, and everybody was glowing. I mean, you could just yeah. tell that Cabo Sun was just hitting everybody right. Cabo Sun was great. We also all got spray tans before we before we left, which was funny. And, and Joe was like, you're going to get a spray tan. It was like Thursday night. He was like, you're going to get a spray tan before you go to Mexico. <laughs> He's like, these things don't add up. Yeah. I was like, Yes, we. I need to have the base. All right, I'm like, we're going out Friday night. We're gonna be taking pictures. Where we don't have time to sit out on Friday. Like we, I just, right. we're, we're hitting the ground running. Yeah, no, we gotta have the base. Totally, totally. Because when you put like a summery outfit on and you feel like pale, yes. it's the worst. It's it's just like uh, you look in the mirror. You're, oh, who am I? I know. You know. I honestly just needed the spray tan to try on outfits to decide what I was going to pack on the trip. Right, exactly. Just to like see what they would look like. Also, you have to gauge the group. Mm -hmm. The group, all the girls were like, "We're getting spray tans." Mm -hmm. You can't be the only one you, who doesn't get the spray want, tan. You, you're gonna be, you're gonna feel awful. Right? Everyone's glowing yes. with their spray tans. Um, speaking of spray tans, I've, I, I'm, my, my hands and my, my arms are completely different colors because I've completely washed off my spray tan on my hands. Yeah, yeah. And my arms, and um, they're just completely different colors. You maybe can't see it here, but it there's is, a couple it's videos. It's hard to tell up close, that, um, but I bet far away. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I saw a couple of videos yesterday. Say, so oh, at least you know I'm scrubbing. Yeah, you know, yeah, at least yeah. you know I'm scrubbing yep. my hands, which is which is good. Right, um, but it's a good sign that you are washing your hands. <laughs> right, good good hygiene. Yes. Although it's starting to look a little funky, um, but yeah, I'm I'm so excited for your uh, your bachelorette next week. I mean, when you were on this bachelorette, I was just thinking about your going to your bachelorette next yeah. week because like I just wanted to join in on the fun. Yeah, and next week. 
is the it's fun. It's the fun. It's the fun. It's, super, yep. super exciting. Yep. Um, so let's get into the topics for today. Um, I don't have much to add. Yesterday was so beautiful. I just enjoyed enjoyed the outdoors. I went and got an outdoor lunch. Um, it was yeah, lovely. What, you had a hamburger? A cheeseburger. cheeseburger. Yeah, O'Neal's and Hobog. It's the best burger so ever. Good. It's so fucking good. I watched your TikTok. I thought I was like, fuck. No, it's... it's t- that was like, that cheeseburger looks unbelievable. No, it's so good. And I, I really just love a classic cheeseburger. You know, I, I do enjoy the lettuce, tomato, pickle, bacon. Right, right, you know, right. I love... But sometimes... Just when you stick to the point yeah. and you just have a cheeseburger with just bun, my gosh. Yeah. Gee golly. Yep. Like it really hits the spot. Do you like a smash burger? I like smash burgers. I love, I love but, smash um, street. burger. Yeah, Seventh Street's great. I typically like a regular burger better than a smash burger. Yeah. But smash burgers are are delicious. So I had a Definitely. nice outdoor See, either you have to go like really big, bur- like it's like a big juicy burger and then yeah. you get all the stuff on it. A big burger. Or like if I'm getting a smash burger, I just want like grilled onions mm-hmm. and pickles yeah and keep it ketchup. to keep it to the point um Fuck, that just made me like my stomach just actually growled as i described that i'm gonna <laughs> click i'm gonna click that my order <laughs> i'm gonna click my order for lunch right now i actually had it like set. it went it went grrr, <laughs> give me give me cheeseburger oh man uh, all right let's get into the topics for today we are going to be talking about gypsy rose and why she divorced her husband We're going to do a Bravo roundup. Tons of news came out of Bravo this week. So we're going to catch up on all that. Meghan Markle released her first product that she'll be selling. We'll get to that. And we have weekly watch report on Wednesday because we didn't do it on Monday because we watched the same shows and I want to talk about it with you. Uh, So let's get into it. Starting off with the topics. So Gypsy Rose, as we know, divorced her husband. She's frolicking around with an ex-fiance. She's getting two tattoos. She's living her life. But... Apparently, she divorced her ex-husband because of food hoarding and snoring. And I just have to say, applause to you, Gypsy. If you're grossed out by this man and you can't see yourself living a further life with him married, uh, get out. Right. Why Why do you want to be with a man who is a food hoarder? Is, you know, think about this man laying in bed all greased up with food surrounding him, oh hoarding food. Oh. The fast oh, food bag, the fast food bags are, are crawling underneath the bed. They're coming out of the closet. He can't stop food hoarding. And then on top of that, you're living amongst grossness. Then he's going to bed and he's snoring all night and and it's almost like the french fries are pouring out of his nose they're yeah. gonna, they're like stuck in there that's that's what i'm in it they it must have been so gross to the point where gypsy said i gotta get the fuck out so allegedly these sources uh claim that gypsy was especially bothered and let's let's not forget you know when she came out of, of prison it was like they were dating for the first time she's mm-hmm. there you know people say uh Oh, you should move in together before you do all mm-hmm. these things, you know, see how the other person lives. They had no idea how each other lived. And allegedly he was a big, uh, he he wouldn't throw away old food in the fridge is what this says. She was especially so I bothered. Paint, I painted a picture that was very inaccurate, but exactly what I well, envisioned you just saw food when I heard hoarding and, food and hoarder. really, yeah, um, you know. This is especially bothered by their shared fridge, which was filled with, quote, old food items that needed to be thrown away. Gypsy reportedly ended up tossing out the expired items, but Anderson was, quote, not happy about it, and they got into a huge argument over it. <laughs> Gypsy, sometimes I'm like, this is this, is this real? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Don't throw away the spoiled milk. Um, Gypsy allegedly felt shaken by the fight and thought it was scary that Ryan got so worked up about a fridge. To add even more fuel to the fire, the former couple also allegedly fought about the way they slept at night with Anderson snoring and becoming, quote, a human furnace. (laughs) So not only does he snore, but he runs hot. But he's too sweaty at night. Um, Clearly, this wasn't the type of um, things that Gypsy was looking for in a man. Now, Gypsy, you need to get yourself a man that doesn't let you lift a finger when it comes to throwing things away, okay? He'll throw out the stuff in the fridge, right. the old spoil milk. He'll he'll pour it down the drain because it makes you gag. I'm talking about myself here. No, I, he, well, I was about to say, I've, I am this person. 
I like I leave too stuff in the fridge oh. for too long and then Joe has to throw it away. Yes, <laughs> and that is their job. Yep. Um it shouldn't be any so other Gypsy way. So would not like to live with no, me. No, no. Um I listen, I'm not here to say that I throw things away timely. Yeah. I it gets to a point where, you know, the Yep. It's got to be thrown away yep. and I and I can't bear to do it because I will I will puke. Yeah, I've heard, um, yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know, Gypsy, you don't lift a finger for the trash. Yeah. He he does that. You just got out of prison. You're not supposed to, you know? Look, it seems to be just very basic levels of compatibility that, that they were they're just not, not on, on the same page on they, the fridge. And then it's like, hey, you can't even, you can't share a bed because he runs too hot and he snores. And right. that is a deal breaker. They would have broken up after, you know, a month of dating. Right. That's a recipe for disaster. Snoring yeah. and runs too hot. You guys can't pick a temperature. <laughs> You're like, you can't have both one no, or the no, other. No, seriously, you can't have multiple sleeping issues. <laughs> Pick one. You're either run hot or you snore, yeah, but you can't yeah. do both. A snoring, sweaty man. You're either sweaty or you snore. I say there's probably so many there's girls out so there that are like, many. fuck, oh my, God, my guy snores and he runs hot. Listen, it's very common to run Snoring hot at is night. also extremely I, normal I honestly, as well. I, I sweat I, I, when yeah. I sleep. <laughs> Joe runs. Joe runs hot, but he yeah. does not snore. That's a plus. That's so, a huge plus. Is this Marty? I got no. one on you, Gypsy. <laughs> yeah. Would shout, that be like shout a out to problem? the man who don't snore. If he was um, a really loud snorer, if, if either of your fiancés were um, really bad snores. Or would you make him like wear something? No, 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 I wouldn't want to put him through that. Listen, unless it's like if it's disrupting your it's, sleep. No, but unless it's like really hurting him, you know. Like people have, like yeah. the sleep apnea. Yeah, right. That of course, if they stuff, need it, they if, need if it, they yeah. need that, then yeah. you should absolutely do that. No judgment there, because a lot of people do have sleep issues and need that, and it actually yeah. really does help them, and it improves their quality I of life. Because if you don't get sleep a, next to a storm, yeah, if you don't get a good sleep, that'll ruin your entire day. It ruins everything. Yeah. So, if you need to wear something at night to give you a good sleep, you should definitely do that. Um, but when it comes to snoring. It really would, like, if I can fall asleep and you're snoring while I'm sleeping, that's fine. Right. But if it's so, I've been around snorers. Yeah. Um, in shared houses. Yeah. Where I just wanted to oh, fucking no. take a pillow it's, and fucking, like, oh. Uh. I mean, when it's, when it's a friend. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and you're, like, in the other room and yeah. you can hear them, you're, like. You gotta be fucking right. Me. No, and you can't go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. And you're just like, wait, oh. did I tell you what my? Uh, you make more excuses for the ones you love, of you know. Course. And it's when right. they're, and it's that's the case, right? If, if he snored, I would be like, oh my god, but look at how cute yeah. he does it. My dad snores pretty bad. I really? Can, yeah, yeah. There, but, but my mom will just she uh, throw, throws an elbow. My dad <laughs> didn't snore either. I've never heard my brother snore from you know we our rooms yeah. were across from each other. I never heard him snoring from the other room. So I haven't been around. I mean, just for just friends yeah, in yeah. shared houses yep. where I want to fuck. I you feel know. like I told you, but like in college, I discovered a way to stop people from snoring during the middle of the night. I basically like lie on one side, pretend I'm sleeping, and clap as loud as I can once, <laughs> and then just like stay there like I'm sleeping. So they wake up and they're not. They wake up and they don't know like why they woke up or like what that was. And then I have like a window to go to sleep before they go back to sleep and start snoring again. And then I would do it. I would do it as many times as I, I mean, need to do it. I mean, anything to get some wow. good sleep. You know, also if you plug their nose. Yeah. That like also. while they're sleeping? Yeah. Or I sometimes it's like um sometimes you, it's or you move. Ro roll them onto their side. Yeah, yeah right. Because yeah. if they're, they fall asleep like this. Yeah. Yeah. I um I've caught myself... I don't think I'm a typical snorer. Yeah. But I've caught myself snoring in the past. Yeah. And have been jarred. Like, have. Oh, have I was like told this weekend I was snoring. Not yeah. snoring. She said it very nicely. She was like, I was like a deep breathing. <laughs> That's a cute way of saying yep. snoring. But like, almost where you like wake up from the snore. Like, you feel like yeah, your yeah, sleep yeah. was kind of obstructed. I've had that before. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm a, I, I like can't breathe through my nose and that's just been a yeah. thing for a while now so right that's just so like, you could have you know, to assume that there's some, some deep breathing there's probably gonna be some deep breathing right. happening <laughs> so we wouldn't be qualified candidates for gypsy I know what I'm saying I don't think gypsy would want to live with me either yeah um, for many reasons she doesn't want to live with this man but him getting so angry about this fridge right, debate right, 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 right. what's he holding on to in the fridge that he can't right. throw in the trash you know, if things, if it should be a there's pretty, expiration dates. Right, exactly. Like, it should be a pretty easy conversation. You look at it, you go, oh, God, 
This expired three months ago. Right. Throw it away. Mm -hmm. Well, why would you argue against that why, date? Why would you want to keep it? Yeah. And part of me wonders, is he really hoarding food or is he just forgetful? Mm. And then Gypsy slams the hammer down on him right. and, and, and starts screaming at him to, to, I keep saying delete it, to throw it in the trash. Food hoarding has a different when I think of food hoarding, I'm thinking of somebody in their bedroom just not throwing away yeah. like expired food. Right. Yeah. I'm thinking of, 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 have, of you know food piling up in your bedroom, like right, as a food right. hoarder. Like you eat in your bed and, yeah. and you just leave it in there and you don't throw it away. Yeah. That's what I think of food hoarding. Yeah. But I, not expired. I thought that it was just going to be like boxes and boxes of cereal that are like have been there forever. That's what I was thinking. Like in the cabinets. Yeah. Not like that's just I mean, you, 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 anytime you think of like a hoarder, you, yeah. your mind goes to the worst possible yes. scenario. You're like, oh my god, they can't even move around in their house. <laughs> right, right. Like guess, he's tripping yeah. over yeah. thirty day nuggets on the right. floor. Yeah, that's what I that's what I envisioned. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it they, sounds like he just keeps the fridge too full. <laughs> yeah. Right. Needs to make more space. They're not compatible, and that's no, why no, they're divorced. We knew it. We knew and it. We knew that was going to happen. Um. Moving on, there was a lot of things that happened in the Bravo universe this week. Some firing, some exits. Every time somebody leaves a Bravo franchise, you know, the eyebrows go up. You go, were they fired? Right. Were they asked to leave nicely, or did they ask to leave? So I want to start off with Crystal from Real right. Housewives of Beverly you Hills. Who were you silent? Exactly. Um. Crystal from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, I was surprised at, but also not surprised in the same way. Because I truly felt like when it came to a lot of the conversations she, she had with the uh, with the women on the show, it seems like she had outgrown them. You know, yeah. like like I, I don't think that she vibed with them. And I and I think when I would watch Crystal, I'd go, she doesn't she doesn't want to be with these ladies. And she. You know what? Go do your thing, Crystal, off this show. So I am wondering what transpired here. I am shocked, shockingly, because I didn't really... First season, Crystal was tough. But I have come to enjoy Crystal on the show. Yeah. And I thought she mixed it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they need... A voice for yeah. the newer cast and especially this last season I felt like she was really holding her weight yeah as far as you know oh storylines or blah 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 whatever and she was good at the reunion so I don't know I just I that's I, why part yeah. of me is thinking like maybe she just didn't want to be a part of it anymore because right. she felt frustrated with being a part of the show where she was getting into arguments with these ladies that weren't seeing her side and and she kind of was like you know what fuck this i don't want to be on this yeah. show anymore like i could totally see a possibility and it's, and it's very mi very mixed mm -hmm. uh feedback like mixed responses about this too right yeah like people are either like yeah <laughs> yes or like no mm -hmm. you know it, it was just compared to, and it's tough because obviously the women that have been on the show for longer, they just seniority, like they, you know, they get a pass sometimes for a bad season. They get asked back anyway. Mm -hmm. And when you're newer, you have less room for error. So it's just like, I don't know. I just, I don't know if I this was the right move. But for some reason... I don't know if she was not asked back. Like, I, I'm... You think? Like, I just... Like, I don't know. I don't really see a world where she's... Where she's saying, saying no. no. Yeah. Mm, I just feel like maybe she was like, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. But it, it, but that's not, but that is rare that that happens on yeah. these shows that they're getting paid and they're getting publicity and they want to be a part of the show. Yeah. So I see that point and it probably was that she wasn't asked back, but I just like to propose the question of <coughs> what if she just didn't want to do the show anymore? But I guess maybe she would say that. Right. But I, I do get where you're, I do get where you're coming from. Because, you know, she did she did make a video and talked about leaving is, like, the mm -hmm. right thing, blah, blah, blah. And they're all just gauging, like, comments and um, feedback, like, 
Garcelle commented, we'll miss you. Happy for our friendship. Bra uh, Andy Cohen commented a bunch of like clapping emojis. So mm -hmm. I just feel like they're sending her off very gracefully. Politely. In a way that she may have chosen the path. But I, I just personally find it, I find it to be very hard that anybody who agrees to be on Real Housewives at any point is like, I'm done. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. It's just, even if you have, I think you have to have like a really bad season to be like, I'm, I'm going to leave. And I didn't feel that that happened, but. Right. I, yeah, I guess it, I guess it yeah. could go either way, but I, I just feel like there could be situations where, yeah, I guess like if you're signing up for a show, and you know what the show's about, then you know. But I guess until you start actually doing it, you yeah. don't really know what it's like. And it's not often we see somebody go, yeah, I don't want anything to do with this anymore. So it could be, yeah, but yeah. also yeah. it's very rare. Um, they're like, go be free, butterfly. Clap away. You can leave the show. Um, we had more exits from Housewives of Potomac, which we do not watch, but um, there was a lot happening this week. And now... Robin said she was fired. Yeah. So, so I, I actually love when a housewife will come out and say directly what happened. Yeah. Like, did you leave or were you fired? And she said she was fired. Yep. I think, um, I, I, like we said, I've, I've caught episodes of Potomac here mm -hmm. or there. I see the headlines. I see the news. I know Robin has been very, uh, involved in like scandals of sorts within her own family mm -hmm. and from what i have gathered <laughs> she was not extremely upfront about any of it on the show yeah and if you're not going to do that then you know what's the point of being on reality tv well, I, I mean sometimes at, fine. at this point it's kind of like kyle richards yeah it's like you know there's so many things happening and we saw more on buying beverly hills than we saw in real housewives which you signed up for that show yeah about your life. So sometimes you need to just be upfront about the things that are happening. If you're not on a reality show, you don't have to do that. But you're on a reality show where you signed a pen to paper where you said, I'm going to share my life on TV. Yeah. Especially when it comes to your own relationships, right? Like, like it's the same, like you said with Kyle, mm -hmm. it's her marriage. Same thing with Robin. It's her marriage. It's her husband. Like, that's just something that people are going to want to hear about. And when you don't want to divulge any of that, um, it's probably not gonna probably not gonna pan out. No, for on, on reality TV. So it was a big move because she is one of the the OGs of Potomac. So that you know, it's it's a big it's a big character to to lose from the show for mm -hmm. sure. And once again. The viewers have their thoughts about that one, too. It's like, ah, oh, should have been this person, should have been that person. But I feel like from what I've seen, it's been a very universal, ah, oh, this is what happens when you when you don't share your life on the show or there's, you know, crazy things happening in your life and you're like, not going to talk about it on the show. Right, because it just kind, kind of seems pointless. Um, yeah. And also make room for people that will or want to share their life on the yeah. show. Abercrombie launched their wedding shop a few weeks ago, as you all have heard, because we've talked about it plenty yep. of times now. We were super excited about it when it first dropped. We went to Los Angeles. We went to the wedding shop event they had there. It was so cute to see all the dresses. But here's the thing. The wedding shop is way more than just dresses. There's a whole section of their wedding shop devoted to the honeymoon, and it's got the cutest swimsuits and wraps and anything you'd want to wear on your honeymoon. So if you have a honeymoon coming up and you want to get those cute bathing suits, suits on, those cute cover-ups. There's a whole section devoted and dedicated to making you thrive on your honeymoon. Or maybe you're just going on a trip and you want to feel like it's your honeymoon. Check out the Honeymoon Shop. I can't because, wait to stock up on there. Right. Their bathing suits are so great. They're so great. So great. I just got one recently. I'm so excited yep. about it. And great cover-ups. Yes. So shop all things at Abercrombie and make sure you check out all the shops, including in the wedding shop. This is not huge news, but I saw that Sheena and Katie uh, did a Chili's commercial where they announced the new espresso martini at Chili's, which seemed like an odd pairing to me. This must have been filmed pre-reunion because right. everything we're hearing now is like Lala and Sheena versus 
right. Ariana and Katie. Uh, I saw rumblings that what they did at the reunion was watch the Vanderpump finale together for the first time. Oh. Which would be different than anything they've ever done before. Right. And I guess probably would spark fights because yeah, yeah, they're I seeing mean, it's, what it's, other people are saying yeah, and they're all right together in the, in, in the room. So I think there was some blowout fight during the finale because I remember those videos surfacing a while back when they were filming it over the yes. summer. So I'm very interested for that. But yeah, I thought this was an unlikely pairing of Sheena and Katie and because it doesn't seem like they're friends right now. It's it's I, I watched Sheena and Brock on um, Watch What Happens Live last week and I'm just not a Brock fan. I'm just really not a, a Brock fan yeah. at all. Um, Sheena, I always get like, you know, I soft spot for Sheena. But also sometimes Brock is getting real comfortable. Yeah, on the you know like he's he's really letting his opinions right. fly. Right, like Sheena, I think can be in the wrong, and I think can be in the right. Like yeah. both ways for Sheena. Brock, he's like is real easy with telling like Ariana how she should feel. And right, right, right. It's kind of just like you haven't been around all these years, you know, Brock. I know, I know he's her husband and he does, you know, have a say. But at the same time, when you're telling Ariana the way she should feel about Sandoval, it's like, you're wrong. Yeah. Um, sh- he also made a comment that Katie is, it only cares about herself in friendships and how she, but the way he worded it was almost like Katie stands up for herself. And so everyone was like, okay, but that means Katie stands up for herself. Like, what's yeah. so wrong about that? Um it's interesting because I, I do think it's kind of like with Jersey Shore when you go back and watch the episodes, how wrong Ronnie was. But at the time of watching and when it came out, people really painted Sam as this like annoying character. But when you go back and watch, you're like, holy shit, Ron was so awful to Sammy. But at that time, it was like Sammy's just annoying and naggy. I feel like it's similar with Katie and Vanderpump where you old episodes, you're like, oh my God, Schwartz was saying awful fucking things to her and about her. Yeah. And so it makes sense why she was so upset. So, you know, I think it, it it's all coming back around now, but I'm, I'm waiting for the, for the reunion. Cause I, I think everybody on that show, when it comes to Lala, Katie, Sheena and Ariana, they all have their right moments and they all have their wrong moments. Um, so anxiously waiting for the finale and reunion for that show. I agree. We're, it's got to be getting close. It, it has. It must be. Hopefully. Because Lala is doing a whole press tour about it. Yeah. Um, Real Housewives of Miami, Todd filed for divorce from Alexia, which was a big, big move. Mm-hmm. This one, this one hit me because this whole last season, there's been some rumblings that they worry maybe they're having some issues and there's certain cast members that really wanted to bring it up, Adriana, <laughs> being like, oh, that's not, what's going on with Todd and Alexia? And he filed for a divorce. And I believe like she posted on her, uh, on her story, like I'm, you know, devastated that Todd's filed for divorce and uh, heartbroken. She said, I'm shocked and heartbroken that Todd has chosen to dissolve our marriage. I will take comfort in the fact that my friends and family will be by my side supporting me during this difficult time. I'm praying for better times ahead. So, oh, that was, this was a shocker for me. Not that I thought like Alexia and Todd were so solid, Mm -hmm. but it's it really hasn't been that long that I just thought like no oh, they would they'll if they're having like a little rough patch maybe they'll just they'll make it through they'll, they'll work through it nope they clearly know what they want divorce yeah so um selfishly I hope uh they're filming Miami stuff now but I don't know if they started yet. well maybe they got the cameras back up when Larsa and uh, Marcus broke up right right and they're right, like all right, right let's get the cameras back up for this let's just get full swing right. Yeah. Could be. 
that that would be great. And then there's been some other stuff. I'll be completely honest. Like you said, people are going to be like, what? You, you don't even watch. One of the Housewives of Orange County got engaged, too. That was a whole big thing. I can't even tell you which one. It was a big It was a big morning for Bravo on Tuesday. It, yeah. I mean, on Monday morning. Yeah, or Sunday like, and Monday, yeah. it really felt like there was a lot, lot going on from the weekend. Right. And it seemed like Bravo was making all their calls um sunday monday of like yeah. who's staying who's going we're switching things up right right what's right, going right, on right um yep. they some, must, maybe some sort of deadline there, had been yeah reached. deadline there must there must have been some big board board meeting yeah, that they all yeah, were a pot, yeah. a part yeah. of and andy cohen sat at the head of the table um yeah but yeah moving, lots going on lots going on in bravo uh moving on to the last topic megan markle announced her first product and it's a strawberry jam How i don't lovely. think i don't think anybody was expecting a strawberry jam no. but you know what I think we can make room for more jams on the market. <laughs> I love a jam. I love jam. Yeah. Sue me. You do, I, I, you do love a jam. I, I love a if jam. If there's one thing I know about you, especially with a, with a nice charcuts, a little fig jam for, oh for Big Rick. Oh, my God. I love fig jam. <laughs> if there is not jam on your charcuterie board, I get upset. Yeah. Because now we're just eating dry meats and cheeses and crackers i need a little something gooey on there to make me feel all right inside you know i like a little jam <laughs> a little sweetness yeah you, you are you're a sweet and salty gal you know i love you my like combo a little maybe you know a little salty piece of salami paired mm. with some sweet fig jam oh my god no seriously my mouth is watering I even love a little, I love a little honey with, um, you know, on the side, drizzle on some brie cheese on a cracker. I didn't even show you, but it's going to be great when it, when it arrives for, uh, one of our days in Miami. Nice big shark. Oh my God. Jams? Oh oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Relieved. Oh yeah. If it showed up with no jams, I'm out. No, no, no. I'm out. There will be jam. Imagine I stormed out of your bachelorette. (laughs) There's no fucking jams. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that, <laughs> where's the jam? So American Riviera Orchard has apparently sent out perhaps, oh, God, to be on this PR list, mm-hmm. to be one of the first to try the jam. Send us the jam. Send us the jam. I know. I don't know if we deserve the jam, but send it if you would like. <laughs> send it if you dare. Uh, they've de- their first product, rustic jars of fresh jam. <gasps> Friends of the Duchess of Sussex flocked to social media on Monday to share photos of the fruit preserves stamped with the company's name and logo and wrapped in a decorative neutral cloth and string bow. So this woman is Mrs. Tracy Robbins. She posted the, uh, looked like a beautiful package that maybe it arrived in some sort of bowl with um, lemons surrounding it. Can't tell if they're real or fake. Could be could be either. They look real. That's a lovely um, presentation. Yeah. And it's the it's the full American Riviera Orchard Montecito. 17 of 50, it says on the jar. Damn. Only we made 50, 50 of them. Oh, uh, yeah. There's no way. And this girl's, this, this woman got number 17. Wow. Damn. I might have to buy this jam. Yeah. Designer Tracy Robbins posts on Instagram sharing. Thank you for the delicious basket. I absolutely love this jam, so not sure I'm sharing with anyone. Smiley face. She then tagged the brand's account, adding, "Thank you, M, with the white heart emoji." Up, oh, there's there's a couple. Oh, to so be really able, went to some special people to be able to call Meghan Markle M. This person got number ten of fifty, Delphina. If you got one of 50, you're really special. The socialite. Oh, she was posting full videos of her putting the strawberry jam on some toast paired with a side of strawberries. That's too much strawberry. Too much I'm stra- actually against that. You you hate just too much strawberry. Put another fruit on the side. Blueberries. That's fair. That's fair. I think strawberry jam on toast with strawberries on the side is too many strawberries. You need to have some. What about grape? Grapes too. Well, I guess jam. I would have. I love grape jam. Yeah, yeah. I I actually prefer grape jam over strawberry toast, jam. Sam. Um, but it, for different things, grape jam for my sandwiches, um, for you know bagels and and peanut butter and things like that. Strawberry jam or other flavors of jams for my meats and cheese. Putting jams on putting jam on bagels is crazy to me. I've never done it. Oh, it's delicious! It Cream is, cheese yeah. with with some grape jam on a toasted everything bagel. Oh, let's get it started in here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> 
Joe Riley gets a big side of jam when he gets a bagel. And yeah. yeah. This is how you do it. Jam gets me excited. <laughs> it does. I get a little like tap I mean, dance clearly going. gets Meghan Markle excited too. It's her first product drop. She'd right. be like, the, the, you know, I love it. And I just, I have so many questions of like product meetings, everything they have coming up or whatever they have planned. And she was like, you know what? I want the number one thing to be jam number one i i respect the shit out of Meghan markle for this because Meghan markle could have went in there and said um you know let's let's put out pillows or sheets or you know anything home decor let's let's do some fine china and Meghan markle said no i want to make jam because i'm passionate about jam and i think Meghan markle is just following following her passion in life creating jam you know I also love eating jam. I've never made jam, though. Have you ever made jam? No. I'm not, you know, a craftsman. Yeah. I've never made my own jam. I don't really know how to... What's even in jam? I don't even know what the process of making yeah. jam is like. You, 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 could put, you could do anything you put your mind to, really, in life. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could make jam if you sat down with the instructions on how to make jam. Um, but... I mean, I'm sure it's just like fruit. And I love going to the store jelly. and looking at an assortment of jams. Yeah. And how many different ones Maybe you they should have. make a jam. Remember if you were going to do the balsamic vinegar? It would be balsamic over jam for really? me. But like I don't want to compete with Meghan Markle in the market. We already had to for the podcast. I don't want to have to go into the jam <laughs> right. business as well to right, compete with right, Meghan. Right. We're going to get fucking stomped out just how she won the People's Choice Award. Yep. Chicks in the Orchard. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I don't you know. know. I mean, same, same, le- same. Pump letter. up the jam. We'd still. S- oh my god, pump the jam. That is our walkout song. We do. S- we stay. We would stay. Cedo. Oh, that'd be cool at the live shows. Like you walk up to that and you just throw jam. Yeah, and and we come out with plates of jam. <laughs> no, we can't step on Meghan Markle's territory right now. She's crushing no, the she's jam game, and, and it's and it's and it's exclusive. Imagine she collaborated with Shakira, like big, you know, big jam because of the Shakira thing with the jam. Oh, 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 Although oh, Shakira oh, right, debunked, she that, debunked that, yes. but would have been powerful right, if they right. if they teamed up for some jam. Yes. Now, put it on the market, Megan. Put it on the Markle, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> on the Markle market. <laughs> That's what she should have called it. The Markle, mar- the Markle market. <laughs> the way neither of us could just say that shows maybe she shouldn't have. <laughs> That's quite so the tongue true. twister. Actually, the Markle would, Market would have been too too much of a mouthful for people yeah. to say. Introducing Megan's Markle Market. Yeah, that one did not pass the, uh, the the study group. You not the study group. Roll off the tongue test. The test group. What are those called? The lab rats. Oh, no. You I'm know blanking. the uh, study you know group. Yeah, I know what you're talking. The no, study. No. The uh, now the I test, can't think of the yep. test dummies. <laughs> Yeah, we're all we're at, we're all in the right area. Focus groups. Is focus that it? focus group. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. I would have never gotten yep. there. Yep. Um yeah. No, we would have yeah. Welcome to Megan's Markle Market. Yeah. <laughs> First Markle's up, Market. we have strawberry Triple jam. M. Wow. To be able to just be so classy to sell jam. Right. You know what I mean? Like you have to have a you have to have a certain je ne sais quoi about you to have your first product be jam. And also just to have the confidence to know that no matter what you put out people are going to be talking about it like Mm -hmm. you it's jam like you know it's not something absolutely insane she was like i'm sending out jam and everyone's going to be talking about it the jonas brothers are going to come out (laughs) you read my mind oh my god that's where i was headed next that's hilarious (laughs) yesterday we talked about the the we talked about the jonas chocolates the chocolates have been out for a while yeah we talked about that we said it came out in uh around christmas time because they were doing the peppermint bark yep um I got a lot of emails about the chocolate. Did you like try the, the chocolate? No, I never. I never ordered them. But I, I the did Jones Brothers like newsletter PR. PR blast emails that that they send out for their store. I got a lot of lot of emails about the yeah. chocolates. The dark chocolate pretzels sounded delicious to me, but I love a dark dark chocolate pretzel from anywhere. Right. Mm-hmm. Coming soon, Megan's dark yes. chocolate pretzels. Yep. Who knows? Yep. Um, all right. So Sounds good luck amazing. to Megan and her jam journey. Yeah. You know, my mom just texted me. FYI, Live Nation under Justice Department investigation, parentheses, Ticketmaster, in case you missed it. Wow. Like, I actually did see this yesterday. Breaking news. I saw the Under investigation. Yeah, they're going to, they, the Justice Department is basically going to sue them for the anti, like, monopoly uh, 
Oh, shit. Ticket industry. They're taking them down. They're taking them down. The Justice Department plans to sue Live Nation slash, slash Ticketmaster for running an illegal monopoly over the ticketing industry. This corporate monopoly charges too much for tickets, exploits venues, and hurts fans and artists. The antitrust lawsuit is expected within weeks. Shit. Yep. Cuff them. Yep. <laughs> Take them. Never said Wrap that in my up. life. <laughs> We'll see what happens. Break the <laughs> break the monopoly. Yeah. Break them up. Get them. Live Nation and Ticketmaster, they can't be doing this to people. No, no. Specifically you. Robbing Bleep people. Master. Yeah. Fuck you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. That wraps up the topics. I am about to hit some some wedding season. My wedding season is about to begin. I have some weddings coming up in May. Um, and that I'm also traveling for, which I'm very excited. So I want to be fresh, beautiful, cute, new dresses. Abercrombie Wedding Shop has the best guest of dresses. They have everything you could hope for to be the life of the party. Look amazing. Be comfortable. You can go into an Abercrombie store. You can shop online, their wedding shop. They have their entire best dress guest section with the most stunning dresses and jumpsuits pants you know maybe a little blazer pants set everything for you to pull focus which we absolutely approve of here also love a good jumpsuit I know we talk about it where um for me like I'll 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 rock a jumpsuit to a wedding and you do rock a jumpsuit thank you I I I, I do love a jumpsuit and Abercrombie is great jumpsuits um the a and F Wedding Shop isn't just women's pieces for wedding guests either. So if you've got a boo who's a different gender than you, you can both pull up looking like a million bucks. Like I said, we love the wedding shop. We're both shopping on there all the time. There's brand new stuff on mm -hmm. there. You can always check, look, make sure you are looking great when you go to these weddings. So whether you're attending a wedding or hosting a wedding or just wanna look amazing in your dresses and elevated pieces, you have to check out the Abercrombie Wedding Shop now. Weekly Watch Report, say Weekly Watch Report to Weekly Watch Report, a hey, Weekly jingle. Watch Report on Wednesday. It had to be different. That was really different and it too. was different I don't, I don't and know if I funky it but not good. Yeah, it was awful. <laughs> It Each was, verse had a slight <laughs> different beat. It was terrible. It was really bad. Let's just call it how it is. Let's re yeah. I'm going to redo that one. Okay. All right. Let's get into the things we watch. All right. Let's get into the weekly watch report where we talk about the things we watch this week. Weekly watch report on Wednesday. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, you can't yeah. stray from the original. No, you can't. The first one was like funky and weird and, yeah, and, and not appealing. You put some emphasis on different <laughs> words that just didn't. It didn't hit. No, it not made, like the first one. <laughs> made me feel uncomfortable yeah. inside. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the things we watched this week. Yeah. I held on to this because. Good. Although, you know what? I was just thinking that there'll be a whole new, epi whole new episodes of Vanderpump and, uh, right. and the Valley. People are getting confused. On, yeah. Okay. So, we, you well, know. We'll talk. We'll talk. I want to get started talking about a new show I watched on Peacock. And I just love. On the cock? On the, yeah. <laughs> on, the, on the big cock. Um, I didn't have to throw that in there. Uh, I started watching. Or I finished watching The Life of Pam. Now, this is based on a true story about Pam Hupp, who was a murderer, a filthy murderer. And it's starring Renee Zellweger, who looks unrecognizable. The thing about Pam? The thing about Pam. Did I say the life about Pam? Yes. Sorry. I, sorry. I meant the thing about I, I was just doing a quick Google because I was like, I don't sorry. know what this is. Sorry, sorry. I meant the thing about Pam. The thing about Pam. The thing yes. about Pam on Peacock. Yep. About Pam Hupp, the awful murderer. Josh Jamal. I was going to get there. Oh. Um, Renee looks unrecognizable. And then Josh Jumel. I didn't even know it was him at first. Also looked unrecognizable. Oh, in I, their characters. In their characters. I said, oh my God. You would never know it was Renee. And you would then find out it was, it was Josh Jumel, but he's sporting a whole new hair look in this show. I was so thrown off. But they both did an incredible job. Renee Zellweger did an, an unbelievable job 
as Pam Hupp, this filthy murderer. And Josh Jamel did a great job as the lawyer. And I really enjoyed the show. I mean, it's hard to, you know, this is a true story about people who were murdered. Yeah. By this woman. But the show itself, I thought was really good. And, um, a good adapt adaption of what had happened you know it's always weird to rate these things because it's a real the real story right but if i'm rating based off you performance, watch the whole thing yeah i watched the whole thing it was six episodes six ep- it's, it's, oh, a mini- oh. it's a mini series um it actually premiered on nbc in uh, march of 2022 what <laughs> you thought it was new i thought it was a brand new show on peacock <laughs> the thing about pam premiered on M- on nbc on march 8th 2022 you're telling me I'm a full two years behind on this show? The way that they're advertising on Peacock is that it's a brand new Peacock show. I will show. say, I believe Peacock just uh, loaded a bunch of like NBC Universal programs that were not on previously. I saw Andy Cohen post like about a lot of old Bravo shows that they just put on. So maybe they were doing that for older and not all i mean this is two years old it's not like it's like 10 years old you know what i don't even feel bad about this because it it was on peacock and it looked like a new show to me how was i supposed to know it was back on fucking nbc in 2022 i I don't remember peacock's taking it as their own as their new show yeah so i also like this only because i'm on the show's wikipedia page because i had not known i did not know about this show either Yes, and my parents watched it, and they said, "Oh my God, you have to watch this this show." Renee Zellweger is unrecognizable, and she did such a great job. Yeah, and I have to agree that she did a fantastic job. Um, I'll give the show. I'll give the show a B minus. Oh, they filmed in New Orleans. There you go. Yeah, back you know years ago. Apparently. B minus. I'm gonna give it a B minus. Okay, so it was good. good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was yeah. good, but it's six episodes. Six you know. episodes hour long or like 45 minutes okay, yeah. you know i'm not gonna give it like an a a plus because you know it's but it was i'll give it a b minus i liked it it was good quick watch would would recommend good. i thought the story was really interesting i never heard about um pam hupp before or the people she murdered and uh, i don't know this story at all so maybe yeah it's uh it's interesting she was um best friends with this woman from work and this woman got cancer and it's hard to know exactly what their friendship was like because she murdered her oh pam hupp murdered her friend from work oh and then the husband was locked away because they thought he murdered pam kind of set it up to make it look like the husband murdered her and it was not him he was he was innocent and he was let go um and he was proven innocent wow and it wasn't until Pam murdered somebody else that they then Realized charged her, her for the both. murder of Betsy. Um, so, yeah, it was an interesting story. And it gets a B minus for me. And I thought Josh Jumel. Was that like the whole show? <laughs> what do you mean? It was Spoiler alert. Yes, yeah, I'm a spoiler. <laughs> because I feel like it's not a spoiler because it's. I mean, granted, it's I, the show came it's, out years ago at this point also. So. It's a true story. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't I just shut up? <laughs> I'll just stop talking. No, honestly, I just that 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 really that cracked me up. That was great because <laughs> I think I said, "Oh, maybe I'll watch." And then he just told me everything that happens. <laughs> I apologize. I just I, I think I said, "Oh, I actually don't know the story." I just took it as you wouldn't actually watch. No, that's fair. That's fair. I thought you were just No being, one listening is going to watch. No, no, I thought <laughs> I thought you were just being nice when you said maybe yeah, yeah, I'll watch. Yeah. And so I just figured it just started fair. coming out of my mouth. Fair. I didn't think you were actually going to watch. And I apologize. I I actually am sorry for that. Um that is what happened. Yeah. Yep. Um anyways, yep. <laughs> moving on. Um I watched Brandy Helville, the documentary about Brandy Melville on uh Max. I, I watched it. I just felt like I wasn't learning anything that I that I felt like I didn't already know about Brandy Melville and these fast fashion fashion places. I I very much agree with you. I don't know if it's because like the broader public didn't know so much about Brandy Melville, but Brandy Melville was so ingrained in like my I mean, it missed me a little bit, but really age-wise, 
but like Gia's age. Oh, my friends and I were yeah. obsessed. Yeah. My best friend and I would take the train from Long Island to the city and walk to the Brandy Melville store. Um, I, I walked down Broadway in, in Soho last week and really could not believe that there was still a line of children waiting to get into Brandy Melville. Mm-hmm. Like 20 plus people deep. To get into the Brandy Melville yeah. store. It's like, what? why? Right. Why? Why? It, it, it's, it's just not sustainable at this point in time. But I still follow one of the models that was on Brandy Melville yeah. all the time. Scarlett Lee. Oh, I think her last name. I still follow her on Instagram because like my friends and I were obsessed. We were just like, oh my God, we wanted yeah. to be Brandy. Ve- you know what I mean? Like like they said. It was in, a uh, like a, a fat, like a crazy fat. Like yeah, a, it was a phenomenon. Like and cultish. Yeah. And, and like the some of the girls said in the documentary it's like you wanted to be them like yeah. you wanted to be the models at brandy melville you wanted to wear all the clothes and i can remember that very vividly i had a friend who just worked in the store and we mm-hmm. were like damn that's so cool. right like you like you <laughs> i remember walking around brandy melville with my friend being like maybe they'll scout us to work at the store like as if i'm gonna commute as a teenager in high school um yeah in 10th and 11th grade to come work in the city at the Brandy Melville store yeah like that you know like just you had these uh these dreams and watching the documentary I just was not I was not so surprised by the things they were saying because I felt like that had come out a lot um in recent years Uh, not even just about Brandy Melville but about a lot of these fast fashion places yeah um which a lot of it is extremely sad to see um but I can't. I, I think maybe there are some people who missed the craze of Brandy Melville, and that's why it was maybe more, more shocking. Yeah, that I I agree because I think there's a lot of people who probably walked past the store, heard about mm-hmm. it, but like it wasn't like in their lives completely. Like mm-hmm. it was for I feel girls my age and younger. Yeah, for sure. I'm yeah. gonna give that a. Yeah, it was fine. I'll give that a, a, a C minus. Yeah, yeah, um, that's fair. I just wasn't like, nothing was like a bomb drop to me. Right. Um, but still, shitty things, Yeah, obviously. Uh, obviously, you know, the big three, Summer House, Vanderpump, The Valley. Um, I would say all three of these episodes this week weren't weren't at the top of my Summer list. Summer House I haven't watched because I was... Um, I, I was on this weekend but summer house was focused on a little bit of amanda and kyle this week uh, more about Lindsay and carl's non-existent sex life which uh, is I, just I, yeah, yeah, I so uncomfortable to hear about she's not coming he's not coming a two out of ten rating that sounds awful, awful. why would you marry that I and know. i still like like Lindsay saying that she was blindsided by them not getting married when all of these yeah, things are coming yeah. up, I'm like, where's the blindsiding happen- happening? Because right. you, Lindsay is a sexual person. She, she says that herself. And Carl is very clearly not. Not compatible. Yeah. Not compatible, suitable for a marriage, in yeah. my opinion. So that was uh, strange. And it's being aired out on TV. And and uh, you could tell Lindsay's frustrations. That's why she's saying it. She's talking with her friends. They're drinking at the house, whatever. Um, but just made me feel... Uh, feel sorry for the both of them that ne- neither of them are being pleasured um uh kyle and amanda you know they can't get on the same page about what they want to do in life where they want to move amanda wants to move to new jersey get a house and you know start a family kyle uh he does not want to do that yet and he looked they seem to be in the cycle of the same yeah argument. well because kyle is a man child right who can't grow up and um kyle looked at amanda's phone in her camera roll and there wasn't one photo of kyle which is strange when you've been together for so long uh not having one photo of your husband yeah there's that can't be true you you don't even have a picture of the two of you together that i don't know about that yeah that seems maybe he only looked at like one week right right maybe (laughs) one week's worth of camera roll maybe no solo pictures just pictures of them together i don't know because i was like how yeah yeah is that possible yeah that does not seem possible and if it is i don't know what's going on there um so that was interesting um the whole season's been interesting but this episode you know west wasn't there this episode um so we didn't really see much about him and sierra we saw them talking on the phone i thought that was cute 
Um, yeah, Summer House gets a... It's just been great this season. Overall, yeah. this episode will get a B from me. Fair. B, and then The Valley and Vanderpump. I'm kind of blanking on what happened on each of them because... It seems Vanderpump is the friggin' oh, uh, the Katie and Tom are dating the same person, right? And, and then Ariana was crying at the um, I felt I, I felt bad in that moment. Um, it was about the house and yeah. all that. Um, so Vanderpump gets a C for me. A lot of the same stuff the going Katie, on. The Katie and Tom like dating the same girl, like being in the same place with said girl is just really weird to me. I just, I don't like. It kind of seems like a manufacturer storyline. Yeah, yeah. On all of their parts. Because it's just... Yeah, I don't know. And Tom, like, doesn't have... Tom's like, oh, they oh, thought you liked me, but I guess you liked my wife. Like, the, it's like, uh, what? The, the, oh, I'm so silly yeah. act from Schwartz is yeah, just, yeah. it's not cute anymore. I know. It's so, he's dating this 23 year old girl because, yeah. because he can date somebody well, on his, a, a, right, that, on his, is, yeah. And That's because his emotional maturity. Exactly. Level. Like, it's just not cute. It's just, in the, the, it was a manufactured storyline, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, yeah. are either of them interested in this girl or is this just like, you know right i don't know um and then the valley i'm blanking on what happened in the valley this this past week they went to that uh gala kristen apologized again to yes michelle and jesse and the valley said again yeah and, this episode was wasn't as good to me yeah yeah um, and not too much happened in this one it felt i'm gonna give this one a c as yeah. well um because it wasn't it wasn't too memorable for no. for me this week, but clearly, <laughs> yeah, I'm ready for a new week of, of Bravo shows. Yeah, yeah, we're ju- we're jumping back in. Yes, for sure. and um, I'm New Girl season two gets an A. Still watching New Girl every night. So good, love. Um. Okay, I watched the Brandy Melville the doc. I'll give a C. Like meh. Uh. I have not. I have to catch up on Summer House, Vanderpump, and the Valley. Vanderpump gets a C minus. I'll give the Valley a C this week. And I'm not totally caught up on Shogun. I think I'm on. I think we just finished seven. But it is very good. It's the best show on TV. It is very very good. I really enjoy it. The new one came so out. So I guess today. like 6 and 7 maybe are the last ones I haven't watched or that I've like great. Nine came I give out today. It, I give Shogun a like I'll give that an A minus, but I think I'm only 9 came out today, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I I finished 7. So I still I have to watch 8 and 9. Oh, 8. Oh, 7. Yeah, cuz 7 was like a setup kind of yes. 8 is. Yeah, I heard I heard good things about 8. Yeah. There was a lot of discussion on the on the trip this weekend about eight. I was like, yeah. nobody fucking ruined it mm-hmm. for me. Um, Abbott Elementary, I'm caught up on this new season. Was watching some some of those episodes. Love. Abbott is a B, like, I'll give it a B plus because I'll be honest, I've been kind of putting it on and like doing other things. Mm-hmm. So I'm not really fully yeah. sitting down and digesting as, e- easy watch. as when yeah. I normally am. One more, sorry. Um, the Curb finale. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's on mine too. I'm gonna give that an A. Yeah. Yeah. I totally Curve finale I just was remember great. that. Sad. I know. It is sad. I know, but I thought um I thought that like it was a good way to do yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Like I liked the Seinfeld parallels and yeah. like everything. Yeah. It was like I thought that was really You know the good. one person I was waiting for to show up in the courtroom was Ben Stiller because Remember the episodes yes. where they like I was like those gonna... are some of my favorite yeah. episodes yeah. are the Ben Stiller episodes. The toothpick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean they the episode could have been like three hours long if they if they really went down because there's just been so many yeah. good, like guest appearances yeah. or characters and whatnot. But they they wrapped that up really nice. Yeah, I that thought. that was an A. Yeah, and the videos of of them wrapping up yeah. were oh yeah so funny. That was so funny because he's so uncomfortable. He's just so she's him. crying to right. him about like how much he means, and he's yeah. just, just like. I think they all know that though. <laughs> yeah. Like obviously they've worked yeah. with him for so long, yep. they know how he is. Exactly. Um, I agree. I'll give that an A as well. I thought it was mm-hmm. really good. Um, a lot of, a lot of plane watches for me. Mm-hmm. So I watched, uh, me girls, the musical had not seen it, watched it on the plane. Fine. Mm-hmm. Like 
didn't love it didn't hate it like yeah. i didn't think it was god awful right it was just very average the only like renee rap i thought was fantastic mm -hmm. i think she is a star and i could feel like the regina vibe from her she plays that character so well the girl who played katie just like didn't quite do it for me mm -hmm. and i saw people talk like when the movie came out i know she kind of got some hate because of just like vocally they were like she's not that great of a singer like to be cast mm -hmm. as in a musical but you know it was fine i get eh, c minus like mm. it's just very womp womp yeah like there was only certain times where like renee would deliver some of the classic lines that i was like yes like mm -hmm. she like that was great or like some other things were changed um but it was good and i also loved the um i also loved damien i thought he was a great character mm -hmm. as well I rewatched. I watched anyone but you again on the plane. Love it's it. A good, it's a good plane movie. It is great movie. I've graded it before. I don't really need to grade it again. Yeah. Um, and then on the way home, I watched Crazy Stupid Love. Classic. Ugh. Hadn't watched that in a while. Run it God, back. It's just an A plus yeah. movie. It really, it really is, is. That's solid, top to bottom. Yeah. The scene of the. Ryan Gosling reveal and mm -hmm. the every like when the David, David Lindhagen shows up and the whole like it's just just such a great movie scene in those whatever it is like five minutes yeah. like there's one moment that Julianne Moore like lets out this a scream that is just so funny every time I watch it cinematic masterpiece it really is F great movie and then I watched a I think it's on Max. I'm not sure when it came out, but I saw it on the plane. And it was um, the Boy Who Lived documentary that Daniel Radcliffe did with the um, man, David Holmes, who was his stunt double, oh. which a lot of people don't realize. And it's kind of crazy that it wasn't like... It was discussed when it happened, but it was not like a massive, massive story. And then obviously he's telling his story now. But he, prepping for the last movie, he um, had an accident and is paralyzed. Mm. And it just like was him. And then, you know, Daniel is a big part yep. of it as well. And just kind of like telling his story about, you know, how he, David grew up and his mm -hmm. rela their relationship and how he's kind of lived with... Um, you know life post accident and how the stunt coordinators and all those people like really have dealt with it all it was really good i'll give that an a minus like it was a it's it was not like a long thing it was good like very interesting and um obviously like it was something that i had wanted to watch and i kept forgetting about it and so when i saw it on the plane i was like oh i'm definitely gonna watch mm -hmm. this um and I, I and i i love seeing Daniel Radcliffe kind of reflect on a lot of the harry potter stuff too it's nice and he has such seems like he has such a great friendship with dave and every they've you mm -hmm. know stayed very close which is nice so um that's everything i watched um yeah i didn't watch much this past week i watched the curb finale mm -hmm. well that was last week but given an a um shogun episode eight i'll give it an a i think you got to start watching that yeah maybe <laughs> I don't know how much I would really but you like love Game it, of Thrones, but so I loved like Game of Thrones. Similar. So, <clears throat> yeah, I I have trust issues with these kinds of shows. You know what I mean? Because I had such an attachment to Game of Thrones that yeah. it's like I need. It's it. not game like it's similar, but it's not. It's not like it's not like okay. it's just but the scale of it is right. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. With like the production and everything. And, and yeah, yeah, but it's just like not. It's not. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, it's rooted in like history not mm -hmm. in fantasy in my mm -hmm. mind like yeah. game of thrones is very fantasy driven yeah. yes yeah but it is like all that like people trying to get power over right right yeah right. um and houses then, and such i guess you could i've think. been rewatching a couple episodes from mr and mrs smith just throwing it on great you like, show you liked it that it's much. amazing yeah. i love it um so yeah, I'll give that like an A minus. Just rewatch. I was gonna it. say you watched it came out like a I month know, ago. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm running out of. Th I need things to watch. Like I don't. I feel like there's not much to watch. Yeah, that's a bit too much about Pam. Stuff, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. watch. I'll I'll have know, you know. I gotta get Peacock. I, I don't oh, know. you can use my login. Okay. 
Uh, but yeah, that's it. I, I really, I'll, the one thing I'll recommend from this week, I didn't watch SNL, but uh, Ryan Gosling hosted, and I saw yeah, the one yeah. clip, mm-hmm. the papyrus. Uh, it was very funny. Because that I was like it was one funny. of my favorite like videos that SNL's put out in the last like however many years. The yeah. first one, and then the fact that he redid it. Right. So funny. Um, uh, I also really enjoyed his monologue of his Taylor Swift All Too Well yeah. song. I thought and, that was great with Emily Blunt. Yeah, and Taylor Swift posted about it. Yep. So when Taylor Swift posted about that, I, my first reaction was like, "It's she usually doesn't post in a way that makes you think she's the one writing it." it yeah, but, yeah. It seemed like it was kind of written by somebody else. Yeah. So I was like, "Is she writing this?" Right. Like <laughs> maybe somebody said, "Hey, can we post this?" And she approved it. Yeah. yeah. Do maybe. you think she ever like physically like sends it sends a post? If it's so- oh, I mean, maybe like an actual post. So much of her like it's, she doesn't really share that much like content yeah i mean that tiktok she made after the super bowl i think i feel like that's probably like the one thing she's posted herself right. in a while yeah. Yeah. yeah it might be dangerous for her to have the logins on her phone though you know why i don't know <laughs> i don't know hacking purposes <laughs> compared to somebody else having uh, yeah it on no, somebody else's just, phone it's true <laughs> that's, tree? that's you true tree has it? Yeah, yeah right she definitely oh, well, does, she definitely of course. does of course um, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I I that, didn't um that video. I don't think we talked about Ice Spice hitting the blunt right next to Taylor. Oh Taylor's. yeah, I it mean, so funny. I, sometimes I wonder if Taylor's like, man, I wish I could just hit this blunt. That's what right I was now, saying to Sarah can't. yesterday. I was yeah. like, she probably would, but everyone's watching her, so right. she can't. Not, like all the videos that, and, uh, and, and and tapes on her. I, yeah. I feel like people would love her for that if she just started hitting a blunt. A lot at of Coachella. people would, but a lot of a her lot, fans would, would be, not. Yeah, be it, that would be really mixed. Yeah, really. Mixed. I will say, if I was still smoking, Haley Bieber's post would have got me fucking jumping up and down with oh, the blunt in her road yeah. case. You know, like maybe for the younger generation, but the older generation would be appalled. <laughs> yeah. They'd be like, "Oh my god, isn't she supposed to be a role model to our children?" But I also feel like there would be like some younger fans too. They're like. <gasps> no yeah yeah i think it'd yeah, be a little that's mixed. bad for you yeah right yeah um but a lot of people would be like hell yeah um but yeah i don't i don't see her doing that any anytime soon but i didn't get to watch all the ryan gosling stuff but i was intrigued because i think ryan i he's, he's really just funny. he's, he's just, just so, so funny yeah like he's just really he, yeah he's having a great moment yep. right now also i was kind of like i didn't see i didn't see the promotion for him hosting SNL leading up to it. Yeah, it just kind of happened. It just happened. And then I'm like, is he promoting? Oh, he has that new movie coming out. The Fall Guy. Yeah. Fall Guy. That's why Emily that, Blunt came out right, during yeah, the yeah, monologue. Yeah, that looks really good. Yeah, that I'm excited. That was like the whole point of the, you should watch the I monologue. I didn't watch the monologue. Because they, they fight about it. Emily Blunt comes uh, out. She's like, stop talking about Barbie. You're supposed to be here to promote the uh, Fall Guy. Like Barbie, Ken's over. Like get, like I'm move a, on. I'm excited to see that movie though. I heard good things. It looks really, it yeah. looks like the nice guys type movie. Yeah, that's a great movie. Yeah. Um, th- I feel like that's just get talked about a, a, a lot, a but that's a good movie. movie. Um, all right, that wa- uh, that wraps up the things we watched this week. All right, that wraps up today's episode of Chicks in the Office. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We love you guys. Have a fabulous week, and we'll talk to you on Friday. 